I've been looking more closely at the Fannie Willis indictment in Georgia, and um, it seems that this is a conspiracy being alleged, but a conspiracy to do what? Well, a conspiracy supposedly to rig the election result. I mean, this think of the irony of this. You've got Democrats who rigged the election result in Georgia and other places, accusing Trump of trying unsuccessfully, uh, admittedly, to rig the election result in Georgia. And they do this by alleging that lots of people were part of this organization, a kind of criminal conspiracy, to achieve this result. So that even if the individual actions of people were by themselves legal. Uh, nevertheless, they were part of this larger effort. And I want to I want to zoom in to one particular defendant. I'm indebted, by the way, for this discussion to Byron York, uh, an article in the Washington Examiner, which gives me details that go beyond the in indictment that I didn't know about. Uh, and this is the former Georgia GOP chair, a guy named David Schaefer. I know David Schaefer not well, but we've communicated a couple of times. I can't remember if we've had him on the podcast or not. But in any event, he's one of the defendants along with Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, Mark Meadows, Jenna Ellis, John Eastman, Jeffrey Clark, and others. There are even 30 unindicted, unindicted co-conspirators. Now, uh, all of these people are facing these RICO charges. And the RICO charges are kind of severe because if you get convicted, there's a mandatory five-year sentence. Wow. Um, I feel bad for these people because I know how it's going to kind of uh, put pressure on them, be a burden they're going to have to carry for weeks, if not months. Obviously, it's very expensive. You have to raise money to fight these cases. Uh, by the way, I've been sharing some links for ways that you can support the effort to help these. Um, you know, this is a, such a preposterous uh, situation that these people find themselves in. Many of them are doing nothing more than trying to further the objective of doing what they honestly believe. Trump won the election. Let's try to prove it. Let's take the steps that we need to to vindicate Trump if he's able to successfully navigate through the courts. So um, the, the, the key criminal act alleged here is a fake elector scheme. But was there really a fake elector scheme? Let's look at David Schaefer. Now, uh, Trump filed a bunch of election lawsuits, and one of the lawsuits was challenging the election result in Georgia. December 14th was a, an important day because that day, the Electoral College is required by law, by Georgia law, to come together and approve the slates of electors. So the Joe Biden electors get together and they vote um, to formalize their votes. But the Trump electors say, hey, listen, we have an ongoing lawsuit. That lawsuit may fail, but it may succeed. Well, what if it does succeed? And if it does succeed, we haven't complied with the law, which is the electors uh, need to get together and formalize their votes. So we need to do that. The point is not that these electors thought that they were somehow tricking the process or creating fake electors. They were saying, listen, if we prevail in court, we're going to need our own electors. And, and so we need to follow the law and meet in the event that our lawsuit is successful. So having sought both legal advice and campaign advice, the Trump electors get together and they formalize their votes. Now, David Schaefer at no point presents these as sort of, these are the real electors and not the Biden electors. He basically says, look, these are sort of contingency electors. And in fact, he, when he had the meeting for these electors to come together, he tweeted about it. He invited the press to come. Uh, the Washington Post wrote an article about it. In fact, they say, quote, as Electoral College formalizes Biden's win, Trump backers hold their own vote. This is in the Washington Post. There's no effort here to do anything underhanded or to hide what's going on. Um, David Schaefer was asked about it, and he says, quote, had we not met today and cast our votes, the president's pending election contest would have been effectively mooted. Our action today preserves his rights under Georgia law. So what Schaefer is saying is, look, if we end up winning in court, we need these electors. We followed the law. Otherwise, they could say, the Democrats could say, well, even though you won in court, you didn't follow the rules and, and formalize your electors on the date uh, prescribed December 14th. So too bad. This is now all irrelevant. 
Now, as a result of what David Schaefer did, which is nothing, or to put it differently, everything completely legal, everything making good sense, complying rather than trying to go around the law, he's charged with the following. Violation of the Georgia RICO uh, Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. Impersonating a public officer. In other words, just by simply having the vote, he's impersonating a public officer. Forgery in the first degree. Just by signing his name, he's supposedly be been guilty of forgery because he should be signing the other person's name. Uh, false statements and writings. Criminal attempt to commit false, filing false documents. Three additional counts of forgery and false statements. So this is prosecutorial overload. This is actually prosecutorial abuse. Uh, and yet this is the kind of abuse that's going on. It's going on with impunity because the Democrats feel, listen, we own the place. We can get away with it. The Republicans have neither the will uh, nor seemingly the ability to do anything about it. And so corruption reigns supreme in Georgia as it does in the other place with the other indictments as well. By now, you've heard about the Durban Accords. This is the greatest threat to the U.S. dollar's global dominance in the past 80 years. Now, later this month, August 22nd, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are expected to announce the launch of a new international super currency, fully backed by gold or other commodities. It's part of a long-term plan to supplant the U.S. and the dollar as cornerstones of the global financial system. Well, how can you protect your savings, your IRA, your 401k from the fallout from this land mark global shift? Well, you can diversify with gold from Birch Gold Group. Historically, gold has been a safe haven in times of high uncertainty, and hey, that is right now. Get a free information kit on gold IRAs. Decide for yourself if a tax-sheltered retirement account backed by physical precious metals is right for you. Text the word Dinesh to 989898. There's a monumental shift happening among nations that control one-third of the world's GDP starting August 22nd. So protect your retirement savings. Text Dinesh to the number 989898. Claim your free information kit on gold from Birch Gold.